In previous videos, we described Bayesianism in general and Solomonos induction in particular. In short, Bayesianism consists of considering that the laws of probability theory are the right way to determine our beliefs infer information from the data, and make predictions about future events. Bayesianism is however slightly ill-defined in that it does not provide a unique way to define the prior which is essential for Bayesian computations. Solomonov's induction fixes this by essentially merely invoking computability. While the prior is still not yet defined, Solomonov found a natural way to construct a natural universal prior based on the length of the description of a computable probability distribution when described in the language of a universal Turing machine. Okay, but what's important to keep in mind is that Bayesianism and Solomonov's induction are only epistemological machineries. Namely, they only allow to determine beliefs, infer information, and make predictions. I mean, this is already extremely important and worthy of a full book on the equation of knowledge that they are based on, but it's only about understanding the world. Bayesianism and Solomonov's induction say nothing about how to act on the world. They are not decision-making algorithms. And yet, arguably in practice, decision theory is eventually what matters the most. In fact, any application of computer science is about making algorithms that eventually do something like recommending content, answering users' requests, or helping deciders decide. Such algorithms are then asked to output more than mere predictions. It is for this purpose that computer scientist Marcus Hutter introduced IXE in 2000. IXE stands for Artificial Intelligence Crossed with Induction, and in fact, it should say Crossed with Solomonov's Induction. Today, I really want to present the setting of IXE, how IXE then works, and why it matters to understand how today's and tomorrow's algorithms work and ought to work. The basic framework of IXE is that of reinforcement learning. In reinforcement learning, at each point in time, the algorithm here, IXE, must take an action AT from a finite set A of possible actions. Then, IXE makes an observation OT from a finite set O of possible observations and receives a reward RT, say between minus 1 and 1. I want to stress that this framework is extremely general. Arguably, this is exactly how we humans behave. We make actions, observe what follows the actions, and receive dopamine rewards that determine our mood. This is also the relevant framework for most large-scale algorithms. Typically, at any point in time, the YouTube algorithm makes content recommendations, observes how users react to the recommendations, and receives rewards if the users act as desired by the program developer, which in practice corresponds to users engaging more with the platform, which itself is causing all sorts of issues that I'll briefly come back to at the end of the video. Now, IXE is a solution to the reinforcement learning problem, which is obtained by combining essentially two components, Solomonov's induction on one hand and policy optimization on the other hand. The first component, Solomonov's induction, consists of considering all computable probability distributions over the distributions of observations and rewards, given past observations, rewards, and actions. And then Solomonov's induction puts a prior a la Solomonov on all such probability distributions. For each new observation and reward, Bayes' rule then allows to update the credences on the different probability distributions, and Solomonov's completeness guarantees that the best possible predictions will be made quickly enough. To understand the second component, let me first define a policy. Instead of deciding only on the next move, Axi will plan the sequence of future moves. Moreover, it will do so by considering all possible future scenarios and prepare a response for any such possible future scenario. This strategic planning is what we call a policy, and formally, it's simply a function that maps past actions, observations, and rewards to a new action which may be randomized. Now, given a posterior distribution computed through Solomonov's induction, Axie can compute the expected rewards it will receive if it adopts a certain policy pi. Actually, for the so-called value of policy pi to be well defined, we need to make sure that it won't take infinite values. This is typically achieved by considering the sum of the discounted expected rewards, which intuitively corresponds to assigning an exponentially decreasing value to rewards that will be obtained far in the future. 
IXC then simply optimizes the policy pi and thereby selects the policy that has the largest value given Solomonov's induction. And there you have it. I've just described IXC, which is often regarded as the optimal decision-making system. Now, there are caveats to be said about IXC, like its uncomputability, or the fact that it does not quite address Newcomb's paradox. But I'll simply refer to other content I've produced on this topic. What I want to stress to conclude this video is that IXC is designed to optimize the expected future rewards. Thus, what it will do and how safe it will be hugely depends on how these rewards are computed. Unfortunately, in all the large-scale applications of AI to this day, the rewards are not aligned with what nearly all of us would consider ethical. In fact, today's algorithms are nearly all optimized for profits or user engagements, and this is very dangerous. In fact, Hooter himself argues that for algorithms to be safe and ethical, it is critical to align them, that is to make sure that their rewards strongly correlate with what humanity regards as desirable. This is known as the alignment problem, and it may be the most important problem for the future of humanity. And someday I'll eventually tell you more about Turnosol, which is a project I'm deeply involved with to tackle this very precise problem.